comes from Jane Doe in Springfield, Illinois, who asks, what is the entric nervous system? The entric nervous system is fascinating. Um, there, it gets called the ENS, or my, my preferred term, the second brain. And it's, it's, we think of all thought and all that being in this thing up here that we call the brain, but actually we have a second brain, and it's, it's a more primitive brain, and it's this neural web around your gut. And we've known about it for a very long time, but the scientists that are, working, that are studying it right now are making some fascinating discoveries. That It's actually where a lot of the chemicals that are used in the brain are generated. And it's, it's much harder to understand than the brain, and the brain is itself really hard to understand. But the, the guts, the entric nervous system, or the second brain, is this web of, of it's the chemicals that are in the brain, but they, they're made in the body, and they're made in conjunction with all these organisms. It's, and that's the chaos of it, is that the, there's, your gut is filled with all this microflora. It's, it's small creatures that live in your gut and help with digestion, and those creatures help make the chemicals that end up in your brain. And so the more we look at it, the more we realize that there's that the what we think of as the center of our thought is not just up here, it's in here. And there's there's some very, very early examples of you know medical treatments for things like epilepsy that centered around the gut. And there it's it sounds gross, but there's something called a poop shake. Where basically, if you're, you know, there's a lot of different illnesses where, for some reason, if you ingest the crap of a relative that doesn't suffer from that illness, you stop having that illness. And that sounds like witchcraft, but if you understand that, you know, if, if something in your gut is not working properly, and let's say you, ha you know, it's been taken over by a certain bacteria or a certain microorganism that's throwing off the homeostasis and causing an imbalance within your system, Simply inoculating your own gut with a, a well-balanced digestive tract that includes, you know, all these microorganisms from a relative whose gut is pro functioning properly, sometimes stops seizures. And that's, you know, that goes back, you know, thousands of years as a treatment, but it's still, like, there's hospitals that do it today where, the, you know, they, they use this, you know, a nasal feeding so they don't actually expect you to drink a poop shake, but... Literally, it's still a treatment that gets used, and I, you know, I, I know parents of special needs children, who their doctors prescribed it as a, you know, one of, you know, it's a, it's typically a last ditch effort when nothing else works, but it's been known to work. Now, as I started researching the entric nervous system, I made a weird observation that a lot of the illnesses that are thought to be associated with the entric nervous system are the same random list of illnesses that cannabis seems to treat. And I, I have no more evidence than that, but that seems like a lot to ask of coincidence. And there, so I, I have a theory that as we get to better understand how the endocannabinoid system works, we're gonna learn that there's a lot, it has a lot to do with the entric nervous system. Now, we, we've talked about cannabinoid acids, and cannabinoid acids are not able to cross the blood-brain barrier, yet for some reason, they seem to work on a bunch of illnesses that are thought to manifest in the brain. And so, in, you know, I, I have a theory that while they're not crossing the blood-brain barrier, they are going to the entric nervous system. And, you know, it's, it's hard to know what they're doing there. We, you know, this is poorly understood. But one possibility is that some of the microorganisms in our, in our gut have their own endocannabinoid systems, because it's not just humans that have endocannabinoid systems, lots of creatures do. And so it could be that some homeostasis is being formed amongst the creatures in your gut when they're exposed to cannabinoids. And, and more, you know, it's totally anecdotal and hypothetical, but the, the process of eating cannabis is, you know, in an edible form is a really different experience from smoking it or, you know, ingesting it in other ways, like profoundly different. And it could be that it's working on a completely different mechanism that when you, you know, when you ingest it through vapor or, you know, smoking or whatnot, that goes directly to the brain and crosses the blood brain barrier very easily. When you eat it, it's not working on the brain, it's working on the second brain. And that, you know, again, that's just a theory, but it, it seems to make sense to me. And so, yeah, the entering nervous system is definitely something that needs to be studied further. Does the ENS of a child differ from, say, mine or yours? Again, it's not well understood, and it, they, they definitely have an entric nervous system, and that entric nervous system 
start, you know, the reason why it's important that, you know, a baby get breast milk as opposed to the formula is you get a lot of, you know, the, the chemistry that the mother imparts to the baby happens through that channel. So the, you know, she, the breast milk is designed to inoculate that gut. And if, if, you know, so it's entirely plausible that the, you know, understanding these special needs children and why, you know, why they're experiencing these health effects is, you know, has everything to do with the entric nervous system and this, you know, weird collage of organisms inside the gut. We just don't know. Yeah. Awesome. That's really interesting.